Okay, so now I'm outside and I'm in kind of the middle of an open area. And what I have attached is a real GPS antenna. It's not that expensive, 10 or $15 um, to my RTL SDR. I put it on its own metal table. There's a little magnetic mount on the bottom of the antenna and it's sitting on its own metal table away from everything. Uh, it's attached to the RTL SDR, which is mounted uh, as far away from the laptop as possible to avoid noise. And that comes around into my laptop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to receive actual signals from the GPS antenna. Now, there's a couple things to know. This GPS antenna has a uh, powered low noise amplifier and some filtering on board. The signal from the satellites that are very far away is, is quite weak. Uh, and so the RTL SDR sends power down the cable to power the low noise amplifier and the signal comes back up the cable into the RTL SDR. And even with that extra amplifier built into the GPS antenna, we need to set the gain on the RTL SDR to be as high as possible. So all those settings are all taken care of in the new radio flow graph. So let me, let me play. Let me play that. So first thing I'll do is I'll pull out my cell phone and I'll use um, an app. This one is called, uh, let me make sure I have this right. This one on Android is called GPS test. And basically it pulls up a list of all the satellites that it's receiving. Some of them are US satellites, some of them are Russian, some of them are European, some of them are Chinese. Uh, what we're looking for are the strongest and highest GPS satellites. So, so satellites from the US with the highest elevation and the largest signal to noise ratio, which in this app is C over N naught. So that's a very specific meaning for that ratio. Um, a good one here looks like satellite number six. I'll take a screenshot of this and show it. And so let me turn this off. And in satellite number six, if I look up what taps I should take off of my, uh, my G2 shift register. Those taps are taps two and 10. So that's what I'll do here. I'll take tap two and put it into this XOR and tap 10 and put it into this XOR. And the first part of this flow graph is exactly the same as what we saw before. So out of this final XOR, I am making the CA code for that particular satellite, satellite number six. And now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to repeat each one twice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the GPS signal at twice the rate that it's coming in. So uh, each chip in this CA code should correspond to two samples. And so I've set my sample rate here to be two times 1,023, which is the number of chips per cycle, and times 1,000. And remember that there are 100 data bits per second, and each data bit gets repeated with 10 cycles of this uh, CA code, and we're sampling twice as fast as that. Okay, so that's why I'm repeating it here. Here I'm just mapping it from zeros and ones to plus ones and minus ones to do the correlation. And in order to do the correlation, I'm going to turn that into a floating point and then a complex number. So this is just a complex number that is either the real number plus one or the real number minus one. And we'll plot that so we can see what that looks like. And then I'll do two things to it. The first thing is to correlate it against, the first thing we're gonna do is correlate it against the reception from the RTL SDR. Here I have all the gains set to be their maximum values. And I've also added this line here to my device arguments, RTL bias equals one. So this turns on the power that powers the low noise amplifier in the GPS antenna. So the problem with the GPS satellites though is they're moving. So the clocks are not particularly accurate in the RTL SDR and the satellites are moving so there's a Doppler shift. And so what we need to do is we need to correct the signal for any possible Doppler shift. And to do that, we will multiply that by a complex exponential that we generate using a frequency whose frequency we can adjust with this slider. And that will just shift the, the frequency of the data that we're receiving from the RTL up and down a little bit. After that, I'll just pass it into the same 
fast Fourier transform correlation block that we had before. Turn it into a vector, do the FFT, uh, multiply the FFT of my uh, ideal stream by the FFT of the uh, Doppler shifted RTL stream, uh, by the, multiply by the conjugate of that, uh, inverse Fourier transform, uh, scale it back down, and plot it. And so if everything is working correctly, we should see a correlation peak at the, the place where the signal is happening. So that's one thing I'm doing with my RTL source. The second thing I'm doing is I'm just directly multiplying the plus and minus one, plus one and minus one stream with the Doppler shifted version the, of, the, of what we're receiving. And so, uh, and then what, it, what that means is that every time the, the signal is a plus one, it gets multiplied by, a, hopefully if everything is aligned, a plus one, and that turns into a one. Every time it's a minus one, it gets multiplied by a minus one, and that also turns into a one. And so uh, as the data bits come in, it will, you will either get a whole s series of ones or a whole series of minus ones. And this low pass filter is averaging together uh, a whole chunk of those plus ones and minus ones. And then we're plotting the result. So we will uh, average all those together, downsample, and plot a thousand of those all together. So that's the, that's the third plot. All right, so let's play this and see what we get from this satellite. So um, in order, these plots are kind of in reverse order. This is just one cycle of that CA code. So if I zoom in here, this is after I've turned it into a complex number. And each, each of the little chip bits is repeated twice. So here are two ones, or yeah, here are two ones. So it corresponds to four samples. Here's a zero, which is two negative one samples. Here are a bunch of plus ones. Here are some minus ones. Every, every one of these is repeated twice. And in total, there are going to be uh, not 1,023, but 2,046 of these samples in one cycle. The next thing to look at is this correlation magnitude here. So this is the magnitude of the correlation of the Doppler shifted version of what we're receiving and this, the, the data that we're generating for this particular CAS satellite. Unless we have the Doppler shift approximately correct, we're going to get basically just noise, no particular correlation. And so let me slide this Doppler slider around and see if I can find a peak. Oh, there we go. So there's a correlation peak. And it's sort of bouncing around a little bit, both because of the varying strength of the signal coming in. And also, if we happen to hit it uh, at a transition between bits, there'll be a little bit less correlation. So uh, what this says is that the cycle that we're generating is highly correlated with the stuff, the Doppler shifted version of the stuff we're receiving, but we're shifted by about half the length of this sequence. So this top plot is the plot of the uh, multiplying the incoming data by our generated sequence. And unless we're aligned, this basically just looks like random noise. And so this is going to look like random noise for a while, unless this peak happens to be a peak right at zero shift, this is just going to look like random noise. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, the clock in the RTL-SDR, the sample rate that we've selected is not exactly the sample rate we're getting. The GPS satellite is moving and its, its clock is a little bit off. And so this peak is actually moving. If I put my mouse here, you'll see the correlation peak slowly drifting down. What that means is we're just going to wait until we get all the way down to the bottom and right when we are at zero shift, we should actually be able to decode some of the data that comes off. Now, it won't be quite as obvious as it should be because the data will still be slightly uh, Doppler shifted. So we'll still see the sort of characteristic kind of slight cycling back and forth between the, uh, the real and the imaginary parts of the data. But I'll, I'll sort of adjust this Doppler shift to make the correlation peak as high as possible and we'll hope for the best. So this is drifting, but it's drifting very slowly. So let me just uh, stop and I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, it's getting close to alignment. I'm gonna get ready to stop it. There we go. So now you can see that 
it's a little hard to tell where the bit transitions are, but for example here, there's definitely a, a place where the, uh, the cycles shift. And if I had gotten the Doppler shift a little bit more correct, you would see the, the bits be aligned a little bit better. But you can see that the clocks are drifting so fast that each of these points here is a correlation of uh, all 1,023 chips. And after you know, a few hundred of these groups of 1023 chips, the clocks have started to drift away. That's why this peak is shifting. Let me try that again. Maybe I'll fix the Doppler shift a little bit. Okay, there we go. I happened to randomly start it a place that's pretty close to zero shift. Let's wait a few seconds here. I'll get ready to pause the graph where each point on this graph is a correlation between 1023 chips. There we go. You can see it just started to come in and I'm still a little bit off in Doppler. Um, in a real system, you would use some sort of feedback mechanism like we talked about in the past, like with the Costas loop to get rid of this residual phase shift. And you would also use another feedback mechanism to align the, the shifting here. So instead of correlating it against this unshifted pattern, you would shift the pattern around and uh, always keep it at its maximum point of correlation. Okay, another thing to try is instead of just correlating the incoming signal with one cycle of the code, being correlated it with four cycles, say. And if we play that, what we should see is four peaks. So as as the uh, as we shift the the set of chips around, there should be four places where you get a high correlation. And there we are. We have our four. Let's see if I can retune. The advantage here is that a little bit narrower uh, range where the Doppler, uh, the Doppler shift is optimal. So when one of these ends up getting down towards zero, we should see uh, much better data. All right, as this correlation peak is getting to zero, it means that the clocks in the RTLSDR and the clock on the satellite are getting closer and closer to being aligned with no relative shift. And let's see if I can catch that. I caught the beginning and the tail end here. It still looks like there's a bit of a Doppler shift, but you can maybe trace out uh, where the bit transitions happened. Uh, it would be great is if you could export this data and then try a bunch of other Doppler shifts to try to correct. It looks like here a transition happened between uh, where there was a zero and a one here.